So as promised, I am going to show you everything that I bought at that um, that really awesome thrift store I went to in California. Um, had to get my voice back before I could do this, which is still not back all the way, but it's good enough. I think I can get through this. Um, I just didn't have time to show you everything that I bought there as I was shopping because it was just too much. I was in a frenzy. <laughs> as you could have seen, if you go back and watch that video, the link's down in the description. Um, you can see the counter was piled up with stuff that I was buying. So let me show you what I got, what I paid for it, and how much I expect to get from it. All right, let's go. So Jordan actually found these. Um, they look like real logs. They're planters. They're not. They're fake. Uh, but they're very cool. They feel like bark. They're made by a company called uh, Surreal. So Real Performance Planters. So you can see it there. Um, we got this one and a smaller one. And she wanted them. And then at the end, she decided she didn't have room for the bigger one. Asked me if I wanted it. I'm like, yes. Um, because I looked them up and they sell really well. And we paid... We paid $5 for this one, and it sells for about 30 bucks. So actually going to send this one down to the antique mall to sell it uh, locally as opposed to trying to pack it up, but I, I have no problem, you know, bringing it back and selling it online if it doesn't sell there soon. I figure the spring is going to be the time for this because it's, it's actually really cool, and I have to keep myself from wanting to keep it. This piece was one that I initially... Uh, I looked at it, I passed it up because it was $6, but then when I found out everything was half price, I went back and grabbed it. It is not Murano. It is just way too thin and light for Murano, but it is a 1960s art glass with a really groovy kind of pattern in there, as you can see. I mean, it's got a lot of the elements of Murano. Um, but it appeals to somebody doing that kind of decor with the amber. So I paid three bucks and it's on auction right now for, um, well, depending when you're seeing this, as of the time I'm recording this, it's up for auction for $19.99. So hope to get about 20 bucks for it. Next, oh, this is not old, but... This is not old, but it's really appealing. And you know me, I don't just look for old. I look for things that people would be interested in, in using in their homes. So this I picked up strictly because it had hummingbirds all over it, as you can see. And then the bonus was that it is, oh, let me turn that to where you can actually read it. I think, I think this is looking backwards for you, though. Um, it is Paul Cardew. C-A-R-D-E-W, very desirable brand, makes a lot of this um, very interesting kind of chinaware. Um, this one is Hummingbirds, and I picked this up for $3.25 and hope to get about $30 for it. Grabbed this little orange vase. It is vintage. Um, it's got a really pretty bright orange with these painted flowers on it. You can see it's tiny. It's tiny. Um, it is marked T-A. Where's the camera? Wait a minute. Oh, there. There's the camera. Um, T-A made in Japan. Really cute. Only paid $2.50 for it. I have it on auction at $4.99 starting price. So hope to get a little more than that. But if I double my money, I'm happy. So next I picked up, where'd they go? Found this little creamer that is um, in the shape of a house and Christmas. Let's see, dum. and then flip over the bottom and it's Odagiri. Odagiri? Odagiri? I don't know. How do you say that? Odagiri. I think it's Odagiri. Um, so I picked this up for $2. It's on auction starting price $4.99. Not a big seller, but uh, they do sell. 
And then I have the matching salt and pepper shakers to go with it, which I also paid, uh, I paid $2.50 for these. And they are also up for auction for $4.99. Hoping they'll go a little higher than that. But if not, I double my money, which is perfectly fine for me. See? Cute! There's a whole set of this pattern. Um, there's canisters and serving ware and all kinds. So, um, Odegiri is a good brand. What's next? Ah, had to do a little research on this girl. I knew when I picked her up, she really had a high quality look to her. She didn't look like a, like a cheap, I keep forgetting where my camera is. She didn't look like a cheap um, figurine. You can see the features in the face, very detailed. She's very detailed. And she did have a mark on the bottom. Now, I did not know who this mark was initially, um, but she was only $3.25, so I took a chance. She ends up being a Lippelsdorf, Lippelsdorf porcelain. Um, and she's actually made in Germany. And I have her up for auction, $4.99. Hope she, like, at least doubles that. I'm playing with the auctions this week because I have so much stuff. All right, RS Germany, miniature pitcher. Nothing exciting looks-wise, and I probably would not have purchased this had it not been RS Germany. Let me get it to where you can see it. You can see the mark there. RS Germany. Now, there's RS Prussia. There's different RS marks. RS Germany is not one of the high, high-end marks, um, but it's still a desirable collectible piece. It's probably an individual creamer. Because back then, everybody had their own place setting with their own little stuff. So um, this would have held cream for your coffee at your place setting. Uh, so uh, this, again, up for auction at $4.99. Yes, I have a cheat sheet over my head. I have a couple pieces that I can't show you because I already sold them. One was the uh, Butter and Toast, is the brand of this art pottery. It was a pitcher and cups. Um, should be putting the image up here of it. This turned out really well because I listed it for $59.99. I paid, I paid, where is it on my, I paid $17.50. Listed it for $59.99 plus shipping, and it actually sold, like, overnight with the caveat that the person who purchased it wanted to have their friend pick it up for me uh, because they were in Rhode Island. They were going to be coming out to Las Vegas in a couple months. So, yes, I did local pickup on this item because, for me, not having to package up an entire um, pitcher and cups and all of that was absolutely amazing. Um, I did take an offer of $50 on it. So that was a really quick flip on, on that piece. Um, and it was a really fun piece. So I'm glad I bought it and glad I listed it. For those of you saying, oh, but what about you'll get a defect if it doesn't show shipped and all of that. I do not run my business worrying about every little potential problem. Yes, it doesn't count in my uploading, tracking, and all that on time, but you are allowed a certain percentage of sales that fall outside of, of the norm. And 99% of my transactions happen the correct way, so I'm not going to worry about it. it. And I have witnesses that it was handed off. I met the guy at my church so that I have plenty of people who saw that I handed the, the box over with all the goodies in it. The other item that I already sold was the Mary Engelbright tree topper that was made by Mark Roberts. Uh, I really wrestled with that one because I loved it so much. I like, do I keep it? Do I sell it? Do I keep it? Do I sell it? I priced it at $39.99 thinking, okay, if I sell it for like $40, I'm good. I won't have any uh, regrets, but I did have it in one of my potential offers to watchers, 
And so I sent them the offer of $29.99 and they took it. So that got on its way and I only paid $1.50 for that piece and turned it into $30. You can't say no to that, right? Okay, so it's on its way also. So um, next I picked up this really cool fish trinket serving dish container to see what's really fun about this is look look at look at the fish face of course I have to line it up look at the fish face it's so awesome I love it um, it is made by a company called Henriksen imports Let's see if I can get the glare off of there you can see it Henriksen imports um, it is a vintage piece it's luster it's got all the cool qualities I paid five bucks for it and should be able to get about $29.99 about 30 bucks 20 to 30 Capitamonte I don't normally pick up Capitamonte because I don't normally find it intact <laughs> the little porcelain flowers that they use always get broken always get banged up chipped up I'm telling you I, I cannot find any major issues with this. and I, I mean, I can't even really find, I mean, there's a couple of like really teeny tiny little nicks. But for the most part, this stayed intact, and I'm pretty pleased about that. And it does have the vintage Capitamonte mark on the bottom. It's got the Capitamonte look. I mean, it's Cap. So... Uh, since it is Capitamonte, I did pick this one up. I paid $5 for it. It is currently on auction for $19.99. And I hope to get $20 to $30 for it. Not looking forward to shipping it, though. Hopefully, I can get it there in one piece. This next piece um, actually does not, does not end up being as good as I had thought it would be. It's a glass bear bookend. It is a single bookend. You can see. It's frosted. It's quite thick. Um, it's pretty heavy. And what excited me was when I saw the original Viking glass sticker on the, on the back. I thought, okay, cool. He's vintage. He's Viking glass. I can identify him. Keywords, keywords, keywords. He's not worth a whole bunch. He's maybe worth about 20 bucks. So I paid... $6.25 for him. See, that, that was the thing. I paid a little bit too much for him, but that's okay because I have him listed at $14.99 on auction, which is below, you know, full retail. So hopefully somebody snatches them up and I can still triple my money. So that, that's not a bad day. So I found, actually, I think maybe Rachel found this wallet. Um, she's a good spotter. So I paid one dollar, one dollar, um, for this really nice wallet, and you can see inside it doesn't look like it's ever been used. It's clean as can be. Got all the pockets. It's made by a company called P and G. I did a little research and have this listed for thirty bucks. Uh, anytime you can turn a dollar into thirty dollars, that's a good day. And I could take a lot lower offer and still come out way ahead. So, yeah, there you go. All right, what's next? Yes, I have a list. Um, oh, the other thing we found was this beautiful Michael Kors. That's K-O-R-S, for those who are not designer aficionados. It is a Michael Kors um, purse. What I have found through my research is it is a Hamilton purse, and the color is Dune. It is genuine leather. What I don't have is a key for the little lock that goes on the front here, which is, that is kind of a bummer, but does not take away from the functionality of the purse in general. So, it's pretty clean. I have it... I have it stashed with bubble wrap for my pictures, but you know what? Super clean inside. Um, and I have this listed for 60 bucks. 
original retail on this was like almost $400. So the other thing is the worst case scenario, I would keep it and use it. I like Michael Kors purses. It's a very, it's a nice size and very functional with the double straps and all. Yeah. Yeah. So there. Okay. Uh, oh, did I say I paid $12.50 for that? I paid $12.50 for that. Uh, oh, I picked this piece up because it was classic, classic. Classic mid-century. Like, come on. So mid-century. Everybody's decorating with this stuff now. Um, I, it did not have the little dings on the corners when I got it. That kind of happened getting it home, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's it's still, we can live with it. Um, but what really sold me was the fact that it has its original sticker. It's um, Hyalin, and it actually says Hyalin America's Finest Porcelain. This is not porcelain? I don't, I don't think it's porcelain. This is pottery. This is ceramic. This is, this is not porcelain. But that's what the company is known for. But anyway, so I, I picked this up for five bucks. And I have it listed for $19.99 at auction. Now, mind you, my auctions, I always start lower than full retail value. That's the whole point of an auction. Start it below what everybody else has when listed for. So hoping to get some attention on that one. Uh, next. Oh, I got this cute little ginger, ginger, jam, jam jar, condiment jar. Um, it doesn't look all that exciting right off the bat and everything. What excited me was the maker. It is a Crown Staffordshire, which is a very good brand. Most of their um, jam jars or condiment jars are a little fancier than this one. But the interesting thing is I could not find this exact one anywhere. Um, it's got these little flowers, like 3D flowers on top. I could find a pattern that had fruit, but not flowers. And it's got the little glass ladle, which these are missing. Nine times out of ten, when you find a jam jar, you're not going to find the little ladle that goes with it. So it's all three pieces, and four if you count the lid as a piece, and it's Crown Staffordshire. And I paid ten bucks for this, so I did pay up for this a little bit. And I have it at auction at $29.99. Still triple my money at auction. Um, but if it goes to fixed price, I'll bump that price up by at least 20 bucks. Okay, next is this little, um, another little individual creamer, miniature pitcher, as you will. And it's made by Royal Sealy. Let's see if I can show this to you, not upside down. Royal Sealy, um, not a super expensive brand, but it's really desirable, these golden roses. Now, they have a pattern called Moss Rose that has pink roses, same shape, same everything. I could not find the gold roses anywhere, so hoping I got something a little more rare. I did pay $1.50 for this and have it at auction for $4.99. Next, uh, this, I don't know, I probably shouldn't have gotten these, but they kind of, I was, like I said, I was in a frenzy. There's these three birds, and they all fit one inside another. You can see, I don't know if they were supposed to be like measuring cups or candle holders or whatever you want to call them, but see, they all kind of like nest together. They are vintage. They are cool. Um, but I paid, they were, they were priced individually, so I paid $5.50, and I have them at auction for $14.99, hoping to get, you know, $15 to $20 for these. I kind of suckered on those. All right, next, uh, Bristol Glass. Bristol Glass. This is a cute little, like, apothecary jar meaning it would be something that would go in your bathroom and hold, you know, cotton balls or Q-tips or something. It's a frosted, kind of a satin glass almost. Um, but that's kind of how the Bristol glass is. It's got a 
pretty unique look. Now, I didn't know right off the bat this was Bristol. I had a little, I had a little cheat there because the former owner, uh, and this is a vintage label. This label has been on this piece of glass for a long time. And I kind of peeled up so one little piece, and you can see the original remnant of a label from the original piece of glass is on there too. So I, I trust their synopsis of this being Bristol glass. I paid $3 for this piece and have it at auction for $14.99. Next is this little Lefton girl. I didn't realize how many people are still collecting Lefton and Enesco and, and some of these vintage brands. But there are actually like Facebook groups devoted uh, to these kind of figurines. So I picked her up. She's got a cute little face. Always look at the painting details. Look at the quality. Your cheaper Chinese stuff that comes in today and the dollar store stuff. They're not in the lines. Like the eyes are like, bleh, and um, they don't finely paint the little lips and all that. So look at the quality of the painting when you're looking at these older figurines to determine if they are indeed vintage. Um, they have a look and a feel if they truly are vintage. And this one does have its original sticker and it's marked. So obviously you can tell that it is a left in piece through that. But but she's cute. I paid do, 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 do. what did I pay for her? Two fifty, two fifty for her, and I have her at for auction at nine ninety nine. Um, she just has some scratches on her, but she probably would kind of clean off. But I've also seen the the sad stories. People go to clean these old figurines, and all the paint comes off because they were cold painted and they weren't glazed over. So I'm not touching her. If the new owner wants to do something with her. More power to them, but I think she's cute just the way she is. Okay, next. Um, this is another one I probably, you know, should have should have passed on. But you know, when you're in a when you're in a buying frenzy, you just pick it all up, right? This is a cute little brownware teapot with a painted flower. It's got the, whoop, watch me drop it. <laughs> Um, nothing super special about this piece. It does have Japan embossed on the bottom. Let me see if you can see that. Can you see that? Uh, uh, kind of. Anyway, trust me, it says, it says Japan. Not made in Japan, just Japan. Um, that's another way you can date some things. There is the words made in Japan, Japan, occupied Japan. Um, there's certain timelines where they were required to label things a certain way. I don't have the info in front of me, but if you look up dating made in Japan items, it'll give you like that timeline of when certain words had to be used. So again, I paid uh, $5 for this, which was probably a little much. I have it at $14.99 on auction. Oh, this was actually, uh, somebody had set this aside to buy it, and I looked over on a chair, and it was sitting there. So I asked the ladies, I said, is somebody getting that piece? And they looked around, and they said, she left. Yay! <laughs> I said, I'll take it. So check this out. Let's see if I can do it without glare. This is a really old sampler embroidery sampler let me get a little closer here you can see it's got it's like a um like a cross stitch it's covered in glass so it's getting a little glare on it but oh i just love it and it's got some discoloration the discoloration is good i mean that only comes from age so that helps date the piece the back is the original framing that they put on here now it says it's this frame is from the Radio Picture Frame Company of New York. I don't know, can you see that? Right, which also gives it some some dating to it. Um, 1930s. I had to go look at my cheat sheet. 1930s is when I dated this too. So this is a this is a really desirable collectible piece, and I paid a whopping 
$2.50 for it, which was super exciting. And I have it up for auction at uh, $29.99, which should be a steal. This one should sell. If not, I'll raise the price and it'll just sit and wait for the right collector to come along. Okay, the other piece I got super excited about. Oh. Now, these were priced originally at $50. Now, they each one of these had its own price tag on it. Okay? I said, is that for the pair? And now, they were already marked off to $25 which would have been a great deal for the pair. She says, yeah, it's for the pair, but it's half off of that. So I got both of these, both of these. I'm trying to show it to you. Mm, there we go. Both of these, $12.50. And they are Red Wing. I also did a little research. These are a particular Red Wing artist, Belle Kogan. They are mid-century, 100% the real thing. I have these on auction for $49.99. If they do not sell on auction, I have no problem bumping the price way up on these and sitting on them a while. These are awesome. Where am I? Oh, Disney. Uh, obviously, during this trip, I... Went to Disneyland during my California trip and saw how expensive anything with Mickey Mouse on it is to purchase. Um, so, of course, when I saw the, the towel set, there's two. They call these tip towels. Tip towels. I call them hand towels. So, there's two of these smaller tip towels. And then there's a big bath towel, Mickey Mouse. Really luxurious, thick, nice towels. Um, they came from Mervyn's originally uh, and were $25 as their original price, which means um, in today's money, that's probably closer to about $40. So I do have these up for $29.99. Royal Copley is a brand that I've picked up over, over time. They have a lot of animal-shaped items, so I'm kind of drawn to the animal stuff. Just found this cute little dish, pin dish, what we would call this, uh, with this cute little birdie. The birdie's very cute. And it is signed on the back. Definitely vintage. And I picked this up. I actually picked it up for $5. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I'm frenzy. I was in a frenzy. But I should still be able to get my money back. <laughs> I have it at auction for, for $6.99. It's not a big selling piece, so um, the most I'm going to get out of this, if it goes to fixed price, is maybe um, 8 to $10. So paid a little too much for it, but it's okay. It all comes out in the end. Oh, a piece that I'm super excited about. Thanks to the crazy lamp lady, and you should go check out her videos if you really like thrifting videos. Um, I'm... I'm obsessed with watching every one of her videos now. Um, but she's got a thing for Flow Blue. And so my eye was kind of pulled to this piece because it is Flow Blue. So I picked it up. Picked it up for $3.25. $3.25. It is super old. This is a 100-year-old piece of China. <laughs> And it is made by a company called Keller Gurin in Luneville, France. Um, they're known for making faience, faience, am I saying that right? Faience. Um, very, very high-end um, pottery in China. So I'm um, very excited about this piece. I, I have this one listed for 40 bucks. This is a little plate, $40. So, thank you, Jocelyn, a.k.a. Crazy Lamp Lady. You're the bomb. All right. Uh, Mid-century pottery. It's doing really well these days. So, I picked up this little piece of California pottery. Actually, it's Covina 
pottery. It's a planter bowl, whatever you want to call it. There's the mark out of uh, California, mid-century. Uh, this one is, I paid $5, which was a little much to pay for this piece. But I'm getting back into my, like, researching. So here's my, like, super tip. If you want to specialize in pottery, glass, porcelain, dolls, vintage clothing, whatever it is, take some chances, pick some stuff up so that you can dive in and do the work that helps you learn not only what to buy, but what not to buy, or how much you can pay to buy something like this. So it's absolutely well worth it. I won't lose money on it. And it helped me dig in a little bit to the uh, mid-century pottery that's selling so well. Now, I got a little rusty on it. So I have this up for auction at $9.99. And it should sell between $10 and $15. It's not a bad little piece. Next, we have these just caught my eye from the shelf. And um, if you, I thought they were just alphabets at first. And then, let me find or show you. No, they have in gold love and joy. And I have filled my home with things that convey love and joy <laughs> all year. So... I actually bought them for myself first, but I have to look everything up. And once I looked up that this company, Shiralia, out of Chicago, Shura, Shiralia, 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 whatever it is, very good selling uh, brand. So these are up for sale for $19.99. Oh, and I only paid two bucks. So $19.99. Hey, worst case scenario, I don't get 20 bucks for them. I keep them and still put them on my shelf. So it's a win-win. Next. What do I have? Lost my place. Oh. This one turned. Where are you? This one turned out to be um, better than I thought. So I thought that this was Bristol glass at first. This has your kind of classic Bristol glass, you know, the painting and everything. But it's marked on the bottom. See if you can see that. Deluxe ink. I-N-C. Uh, glass. Or does it just say? Deluxe ink USA. Deluxe ink USA. Um, but... I had never actually heard of Deluxe Ink um, USA glass. So I did a little homework digging and found it. It's very desirable. This is not one of the top end designs, but I got to learn a lot by uh, digging into it. And I will still turn my $5 into at least $20. You see, it's really sweet. Like, where is it? Oh, it's on this side. The artist, like, sign the pieces. Where's my camera? There it is. See? Really sweet piece of glass. Next, I found these two kind of bookend kind of looking vases in the shape of fans. They are unmarked, but they are obviously vintage, probably mid-century. Um... Super cool to find the pair as I was doing some research. A lot of people just have one. So the fact that I have two is pretty cool. And uh, I picked these up for $2.50. And I have them uh, in my store at $49.99. Not bad, huh? Uh, salt and peppers. Again. Thank you. Thank you, crazy lamp lady. Uh, I'm looking at salt and peppers again. I found these little guys. They are black poodles. You see their eyes are just a little messed up. They have the cork bottoms. That's one of the ways you can tell vintage salt and peppers because they all used to have corks in the bottom. And I picked these up for $5, which is a little pricey for salt and peppers. But again, I got to do a little research and kind of looking. I have these listed at $9.99 on auction. So hoping to double my money on those. 
And then of course, I'm on the salt and pepper thing. Now, what just happened as I was getting ready for this was one of the one of the corks pushed up onto the inside and I really don't know that I can get that down. So I'm a little sad about that, but this one has its cork. Anyway, let me show them to you. They're pear shaped, they're Asian, they're unmarked. Um, I picked these up for $2.50 and also have them at $9.99. Next, oh, this is a really interesting piece, um, and it got more interesting as I listed it, and I'll, and I'll show you why in a second. So it's in the shape of an umbrella. It's meant to hold flowers. You done? You're not done. No, you need to be done. Okay, I think she's done. <laughs> um, it's meant to hold... Fl she has to get the last... flowers like a flower frog you can see um, and then I found that it was made in Italy okay MBD made in Italy now the interesting part about this is it has a pretty significant manufacturing defect and the way I can tell it's a manufacturing defect is it's glazed over it's painted and glazed over so they didn't get the bottom real round like somebody <coughs> I'm going to auction off the dog in just a moment. Okay. Um, so it's almost like somebody like grabbed it or something and put like little finger indentations when it was still like a soft clay and then went ahead and painted and fired it. Like, okay, um, but it's, it's definitely, it's not broken. It's made that way. So it's all good. I have this, uh, let's see, I paid $5 and have it at auction for $14.99. Okay, one of the last pieces I have to show you is this really cool... Ugh. It is an ashtray. It is actually a cigar ashtray. As you can see, you can tell cigar ashtrays because they have the really big uh, holders. Is that the, I don't know what the technical work is for the little divots and ashtrays that hold cigarettes and cigars. Anyway, it's got that. It's got a hammered appearance all along the outside. It's got a sailboat and deer in there very art nouveau actually um it's got really nice scrolling handle it's got the feet it's got everything you would want from a cool piece of collectible and i don't know if you're going to be able to see this mark i'm going to try not to do it upside down at least so let's, let's see if i can get that in there it actually is Meriden. It is, it's a silver plate, but it's better than that. It is quadruple plate or quad plate, um, which there are collectors of just quad plate items. I don't know if it would have had, I'm almost thinking it would have had maybe something else on this handle, but maybe not. I don't know. I mean, like a little Bakelite something or other. I, I could be totally off. But I um, was really excited to get this piece. I'm trying to see what I paid for it. I paid $12.50. I have it at auction at $49.99. This is a good piece. Um, if it doesn't sell at auction, 
that price is going to go up substantially. And I will sit on this a while because I could not find another one like it. So Rachel was with me, and she was getting in on the frenzy as well. And she was over in the stuffed animal section because she's kind of taken over my plush store. And so um, she found this, which, you know, looks like a lion. But check this out. She's got a good eye. Not only is it a puppet, but it's a hard rock cafe lion puppet. Paid $2 for him, and he should sell for about 15 bucks. And then she also found, oh, well, this was really cool. This is a bear on a chair, right? And he fastens with Velcro or hook and loop. Um, but check this out. He is from the NBC Experience. So I guess when you go do the NBC Experience, you get a souvenir. And he was one dollar he was one dollar and we can turn him into about twenty five dollars twenty to twenty five she's got a good eye she's hired uh of course we had just gone to it's a small world she's like hey mom there's a disney doll so yep this is a small world this is the african boy and his original Disneyland retail was six bucks. We paid one dollar and should be able to turn him into twelve to fifteen. There's a whole line of those. It's a small world dolls, by the way. People love them. Another Disney was Miko from Pocahontas. And Where's his tag? You can see, there's his little taggy tag. And we paid $1.50 for Miko and should be able to turn him into about 20 bucks. Then we also got, oh, I don't know what's going on right now, but sloths, sloths are like the in thing, right? Every time I worked with sloths, a, a sloth, sloths. <laughs> Up at the Reno Zoo, um, I only worked up there for a very short time, but we had two sloths, and I got to clean their cage, and I will tell you, these little claws that these guys have, you have to watch out for, because they may be slow, ooh, but if they get you, they get you good, uh, so you have to watch them, they can be a little temperamental, anyway, people love sloths, so picked this guy up for $1.00. Should turn him into 12 to 15. All right. I think that was it. Oh, you know what? I haven't even researched this guy yet. Picked him up for 50 cents because he was $1 and he was half price. He is a vintage. He is a vintage raisin. So I will have to, like, update you what he's worth right up here in this corner. And with that, I am going to do a second haul video for the clothing because I know not all of you are interested in clothing. So I want the clothing people to be able to go to their own video and new vintage stuff people go to this video and all will be right with the world, right? And uh, be stay in tune. Hit the subscribe button because I am on a roll putting out these videos. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Hope you're getting something out of it. And I look forward to sharing a lot more with you. Now, go be profitable and make it fun.